From what I understand, um, two women and one man have been killed. They were... It's not known whether any army commanders will ultimately be called to account for this. Have you ever sat and watched the news for more than 10 hours? Well, I don't advise you to do it. Although that's one of my favorite things. Just because I, like the rest of you, like to experience war, famine, death, cancer, recession, depression, misery, and all of those inhumane qualities vicariously. Passiveness, if you may call it. But isn't it good to be non-existing in the decadence of our society? where people's misfortunes have become a commodity for TV, where our mishaps have become a product for televised TV networks, just to grab more money from our bloodlust nature. I choose not to be there. And where do we, the masses, stand in the face of this horrendous nature of our fellow man crimes? Where did this all begin? Millions of years ago, God gave us thumbs. And then we made a club and beat each other down. We made knives to cut food, yet was used by others to kill. The whole progression of a bow and arrow ended up with inventing a gun. Vicariously, from afar, not really being there. Even now, a decade after the tragedy, many of those who were hurt are still dealing with the consequences. God, I will grab a drink and wash those whole troublesome thoughts from my mind. My usual daily drink. The drink that reminds me of one thing. That I might not be part of the solution. But surely I am not contributing to the problem. Because, simply, I am not there. 15th, 2009. And a United Nations compound in Gaza comes on the fire. Terror for everyone inside as artillery shells rain down. The devastating embassy attack in Kenya in 1998. The Douglas City Arrows despite repeated telephone calls from the UN and the Israeli army. Hundreds of civilians are sheltering in the compound at the time, and the shelling has threatened to blow up several freeloading field tankers. Now, in a report... injured, but the victims, 10 years on, say the US government owes them direct compensation. The United States has a moral obligation. There was no direct financial... Uh, anytime you see uh, humanitarian catastrophes, we are the most powerful nation on Earth. We have the most stake in uh, creating a order in the world that uh, is stable and in which people have hope and opportunity. And when you see a genocide, whether it's a long time, I must have drank too much because when I woke up I couldn't feel my legs and I felt the weight in my body. I opened the door, there stood two guys and a girl. Never saw them before, but something felt right. They had happy faces and something felt natural. For some reason I let them in. Isn't that funny, letting strangers in your home? But again, I was drunk. I couldn't function properly. The strangers wandered around. They seemed happy. Brian, thank you. 
Time and again, children have shown the capacity to commit heinous crimes. So when should the decision be made to try kids as adults? Right now, Colorado lawmakers are looking at that question. Tonight, KKTV 11 News reporter Stephanie Ross takes us back to one of the most shocking murder cases here in Southern Colorado and also asks the question, are some murderers too young to serve life sentences? In the early morning hours of December 17, 1992, 15-year-old Jacob Eind slaughtered his mother and stepfather in their Woodland Park home with the help of a friend. My whole court was not like, let's just leave Pamela and Kermit Jordan were shot first in their bed by 17-year-old Gabriel Adams. They were stabbed, then they struggled. Jacob finally finished the job when he grabbed his stepdad's 357. And to this day, I consider it one of the more gruesome crimes that have ever The strangers invited me to a ride. What kind of a ride, I asked. They said a magical one. And I accepted. Can you guys believe today's news? You mean yesterday's? This one's already up. <laughs> Will you ever change? I'm serious, you guys. Did you see the guy who killed his parents? Is this real or do newscasts just make that stuff up? Seriously, I think they should start to consider censoring the whole news thing. What? Yeah. What do you mean by censoring? At the end of the day, this is a newscast. People should be aware of what's happening around. Yeah, I know, but the news is becoming more violent and inhumane by the minute. And some children can be exposed to such a shocking truth. <laughs> Excuse me, but I don't see the necessity in the whole news thing. How does it help me anyway knowing that thousands of Palestinians are being murdered every day by the brutal Israeli forces? I disagree And that you. kid who killed his parents. Do you think my day will be any different if I didn't hear the news? Soon he will be hanged. <laughs> so what's the big deal? We lost a moron. Traffic can get any easier because of that. What about you? What do you think? Me? I agree. <laughs> Which part do you agree with? All, I guess. Why don't you share your views on the subject matter with us? Are you shy? <laughs> no, I'm not shy. It's just that my views are not that different from yours. Are these people real? How did they know exactly what's going on through my mind? Is it coincidence? Because if they are real, then these people are my perfect companions. <laughs>